right, welcome everybody to the podcast. Today we've got a great guest. We have Cross One of Freestyle Session, one of the main people helping push this culture forward for a long time. So really appreciate you having, uh, really appreciate having you here. Thanks for taking the time. Right on, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Um, so just to get started, for anyone who doesn't know who you are, do you mind just giving a little background on? Uh, how you got into breaking or hip hop and and that kind of thing? Uh, yeah, my my uh, everybody calls me Cross One. <laughs> I'm from San Diego, California. I've been uh, involved in hip hop since '84, um, actually '83, um, from the from the first time I listened to a Run DMC tape. Um, found breaking not too long after. Did that for a couple years until it kind of died out. Um, and then started doing uh, graffiti and tagging around town and stuff mm -hmm. from about 87, 88 to about 2000. But around uh, <clears throat> New Year's 92, 93 um, is when I found Breaking Again mm -hmm. and just kind of been around it ever since. Um, stopped being active as far as dancing was concerned. Like around 2002, I got an injury. Um, Kind of kept kept with it a little bit, you know, just for like judges exhibitions and just messing around a little bit. But then uh, ruptured one of my Achilles tendons doing a uh, judges showcase, so kind of just just laid off it ever since, you know. Yeah, yeah. Then took up DJing uh, like around 2000, and uh, still do that to this day. Mm -hmm. Started promoting in '97, so yeah, just been all around the hip hop ciphers and everything, you know. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, you're really involved in everything. Yeah. Um, yeah, so you, you just mentioned like getting into uh, kind of throwing events and stuff. Can you talk about maybe how you got into that? Yeah, um, I mean, this, as the story goes, uh, you know, B-Boy Summit started here in San Diego like in 94, 95. Mm -hmm. um, and it was kind of a yearly thing. Um, and they took off. I think the last one was, I want to say 95 or 96. Uh, and then they moved to L.A. So it kind of left a hole in San Diego in my opinion. So, you know, I was the, one of the last people practicing out here um, actively. So um, just to kind of spark the local scene, like in 97, um, started throwing freestyle session. Mm -hmm. And that was 25 years ago, and I'm still doing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's like, I think maybe for people from my generation, that's like one of the first big, like real breaking things that we saw was freestyle mm -hmm. session like i saw freestyle session three with like flying tortillas and, and yeah. that kind of thing and that just blew my mind and that got me into into breaking yeah right on. um yeah can you can you talk a little bit about like freestyle session and and how that like where the name um comes yeah from like i said whatever. i i well i i helped one of my friends do an event out out in san diego or in chula mm -hmm. vista and uh, you know it went real well <clears throat> kind of participated in the door because <laughs> I, I kind of helped fund it, and then uh, mm -hmm. I also uh, doubled up and, and entered and won won in the competition <laughs> with a couple people that I had. So kind of doubled up, you know. And uh, I was like, "Oh man, that's cool," you know. So I, I was like, "I want to give it a shot." So I, you know, a couple months later, I planned a freestyle session, and you know, after freestyle session happened, um, you know, before and after the event. A lot of people are going to practice so i just kind of seen it as an opportunity to get more people to practice so mm -hmm. um you know i do another one three months later same thing it just kind of kept the practices steady mm -hmm. just kept on doing it like every couple months you know like the first the first five freestyle sessions happened over the course of two years and there was also a, a turntable challenge and an mc <clears throat> battle that had b-boys there too so it was seven events in two years so the frequency was a lot more than it was, you know, now where it's, you know, pretty much, I guess you, it, it, the frequency is almost the same. Actually, there's probably more now, but they happen all around the world versus mm -hmm. just being right here in one city, you know? So, yeah. yeah, like the Southern California one is like once a year. Um, it's pretty much the anniversary. This year's uh, 25th anniversary. Wow, that's crazy. Um, so, yeah, man, it's, you know, it's led me around the world. We've done the event in 40 different countries. We've given out a lot of money. I mean, you know, we've had the prize money up to like fifty thousand at one point. 
Uh, this year, I believe it's going to be like twenty thousand in cash and prizes. So, mm -hmm. you know, we got we got rings that you know cost about a thousand dollars each plus because they're made out of real gold, mm -hmm. um, and we're giving out like thirteen of those. And then we have like ten thousand dollars in prizes and for ten thousand dollars in cash for the the B boys, actually plus the runner up and you know the poppers, the the hip hop style dancers, the house mm -hmm. dancers. Like so, we got like a plethora of different categories mm -hmm. and we're giving out a lot of cash for that as well. Yeah. 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 Freestyle sessions always been kind of this, like it was, it's not always been like just focused on breaking, breaking, right? Like I remember the old ones that you had MCs and stuff and you mentioned like there was mm -hmm. some DJ stuff. And, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, we, uh, you know, marketed as a hip hop event, so it's not yeah. just breaking, but it is focused on breaking, yeah. you know, mainly, that's that's where people, a majority of the people from around the world are coming for the breaking portion, but you know we'll probably have an MC showcase, we'll have a DJ showcase, um, we're gonna probably have a ph photography exhibition this year. Cool. Um, you know we might have some uh, some writers uh, doing some pieces outside on the walls. Um, you know we have a hip hop swap meet, which we have vendors from all around Southern California and beyond, yeah. all over the world really. And um, yeah, man, it's just a uh, I've heard people compare it like uh, it's like the Disneyland of breaking or the Super Bowl of breaking. So like <laughs> yeah, you yeah. know, it's kind of all encompassing. Like, and I, I feel like that's why we get so many people to come. You know, because it's not just breaking, mm -hmm. but you could go watch. You know, in the funk side, you could watch the hip hop. You could watch the poppers, mm -hmm. the lockers. You know, whackers. You could watch the kids' room. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a lot of different. We have like three different rooms, and you know, there's a lot of different areas. We got a place to eat. You know. Yeah, so many different different areas, you know. That stuff's important, right? Yeah, I mean, I think so. I, I think you know, uh, people's attention spans are very slim these days. So you know, right. you don't want to sit there and watch twelve hours of breaking all yeah. day. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah, know, so, so you want to kind of like mix it up, and yeah. check everything out. Yeah, yeah, but uh, yeah, especially for people who like aren't necessarily dancers, dancers. Or they're very casual, yeah. or whatever. It's important to have like lots of variety for people, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And especially food and, and drinks and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Um, can you can you talk a little bit about yeah taking freestyle session from this like smaller local thing, and then now it's this worldwide thing that's all in all these different countries. Mm -hmm. um, can you talk a little bit about like yeah that that process that you went through, right? how, how that, I mean, went. it, it kind of just happened naturally, you know, like, mm -hmm. um, it was, a it was more mainly when I first started, I, I was more focused on Southern California, mm -hmm. but you know, like I promoted to like Las Vegas, Denver, San Francisco, Arizona. So all those areas came out, you know, so right off the, right off the bat, it was kind of a regional event. Mm -hmm. um, all the way up and down the West Coast right. and going into like Arizona and, and Nevada. And then, you know, the second one, I invited people from Japan to come and they ended up battling Soul Control in, a, in an exhibition match. And then like the third one, I invited Storm, which, you know, brought more people from, there's a couple people from Europe came, you know, more people from across the nation came. Going into the second year, like by the fifth anniversary, you know, it was an international thing. Like there was a, you know, crew from Japan come in. There was crews from here to New York, all the way down to Miami, all the way to Chicago. You know what I mean? So yeah. it spread fairly quickly. And, you know, by, by six, seven, eight, it was a worldwide thing. You know what I mean? And, mm. you know, when I knew it was, it was big was when I was, I was selling videos and stuff and I was getting orders from all around the world. And, yeah, and even and even going to Europe for the first time, um, you know, I, I went with Rock Force when they went to Battle of the Year, and and uh, people started asking me for my my uh, a picture with me, <laughs> and I'm just kind of like, well, why do you want a picture with me? And they're just like, well, you're the you're the MC at Freestyle Session, right? And I'm like, yeah. And they're like, cross one, and I was like, yeah. So they're like, they kind of they knew, you know. So I was like, oh shit, okay. So I knew that it, it became a, a pretty pretty big thing, you know, across the world. Yeah. Um, you know, and then by 2002, we we did our first one in Japan. I'm half Japanese, so mm -hmm. that was fairly easy to do. I just linked up with a, a buddy of mine that had a store out there, 
and just kind of taught them the ropes of how to promote and how to, how to get the word out. And uh, we really blew it out the, a box for the first one in Japan. We, we brought over like 55 people from, from the U.S. over there. Um, pretty much take over a whole plane. <laughs> like, it was pretty wild. And uh, yeah, man, ever since then, Japan's been going down. And then, you know, I had a distributor for my videos um, around 2004. He kind of he kind of laid out the blueprint for me on how to do, you know, kind of a uh, European wide uh, thing. He he contacted promoters all across the across, all across the Europe and and kind of had them do it while we kind of worked with them. And uh, yeah, we did like eight countries in Europe that year. And yeah, man, that was crazy. So we ended up doing eight countries in Europe. We did one in Korea, one in Japan. And these are all just from networks, from just going to events and just people that I knew right. and uh, kind of made it a worldwide network and, and did a world championship that year. And uh, yeah, like I said, it just kind of like grew as it, as it just naturally, you know, I, I never really set out to be like, okay, freestyle is going to be a worldwide thing. It just, right, right. just kind of turned out to be that, you know? Yeah. Um, you, you mentioned, yeah, just like, promoting and from the beginning you were kind of promoting it pretty hard i guess right to outside of like the local san diego scene right yeah i mean I, when i said i used to do graffiti and like tagging like i was like all city all county you know what i mean like i got up everywhere so my mentality with promoting was the same thing except mm -hmm. i was getting up everywhere like i was you know me and i, I actually a uh, b-boy ivan was one of the first people that i told uh about the event and he was just like dude let's do it and and he was with me the whole time like he was like let's go to las vegas we'll, we'll link up with these guys we'll go to this practice we'll go to this event hmm. and then we went to the bay and we went to this event and, you know like just every city we went we were we were busing and practicing with people and giving people flyers and information on the event and like i, I just kind of approached it like a, like i was bombing you know and just getting our name out you know because so, Back then, nobody knew what freestyle session was, you know. Right, right. So, I think it was a combination of that, and then just having a dope name and and uh, documenting right. it and packaging a dope product with the VHS, and then just getting that out there, and it just snowballed, you know. Right. How uh, how how much of, a, of, a, of an effect do you think the VHS and like the DVDs and stuff had on getting? Uh, oh. It was like it was like going viral every time right. we put out a video. You know? Right, right. Um, how how has that sort of thing changed over the years? Like with the advent of YouTube and streaming and things like that. Yeah, I mean, where we used to sell videos and bring revenue in that way, ultimately to give it out as as a cash prize. Um, now it's more we got to get you know more attention as far as uh, social media and and you know streams and youtube videos and whatnot and, and kind of turn that into sponsorship dollars which we ultimately use as as the vehicle to to give out a cash prize and stuff like that you know so mm -hmm. it, it, it's ultimately the same but you don't see the the return as much as you did like back then when we had you know we would sell like a thousand videos right off top and it'd be like, you know, ten thousand dollars wholesale, you know, right. and then retail you sell just as many. And, you know, that money automatically comes in and you recoup all your losses and then go go at it again and, and throw the event all over again. You know no? right. but right. but now it's more like we're we're uh, kind of leaning on to sponsors and leaning into uh getting the right numbers at the door for us. You know I mean I, I I'm lucky to have a partner that uh you know, my partner Polo from, uh, he manages Black Eyed Peas and he owns Grassroots Productions. Luckily, I'm, you know, I've been with him since the two year anniversary. And, you know, with the success of the Peas, he's done real successful. So he's kind of like, you know, my partner and quasi back, backer as well. So, mm. you know, it's not like we have to lean too heavy on, on uh, you know, having to recoup. But, you know, for me, for my sake, so I don't owe him money. <laughs> I do have to. I have to create a budget that we know that we're gonna, you know, at least break even at the end of the, at the end of the year. You know, so right, right. Yeah, yeah. Like that's that's one thing that I've heard a lot, just from other other 
promoters and, and organizers and stuff is like the funding funding issues and yeah just yeah. some struggles with that and a lot of stuff for a lot of like say smaller scale organizers they they fund a lot out of out of pocket they don't have any sponsors and stuff like that um, yeah, I'm, I'm the same way <laughs> but yeah yeah <laughs> no, we we're just see. on a different level you know like, yeah exactly uh, right yeah so, i mean we, with, with what we do with udef we we kind of counter some of the, that struggle for some promoters you know like for the promoters that we do work with like you know we're paying out you know the cash prizes you know we're working with like sponsors like red bull to get some judges you know which don't require the promoters to come out of pocket as much mm -hmm. and and kind of like alleviate some of those overheads that they might have yeah uh, which enables them to be able to use that money into more production aspect or Right. Or doing, you know, doing special guests or, or just kind of upping their level of production as far as right. the event is concerned, you know. So, yeah. um, you know, it's, it's, it's a work in progress because, you know, we haven't been able to get as much sponsorship as we like. Mm -hmm. But at least it's something, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like yeah. that's a far cry from how it, how it used to be, right? This kind of thing. Yeah. I mean, you, right? you'd be lucky if you got any sponsorship, to be honest. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, like I, I think... Outside of that, I, I might have, there might have been two instances where I had the event maybe, you know, a third or, or halfway funded, you know, from sponsors, but it's very few and far between, you know? Yeah. Another thing that I'm really curious about is just getting, I mean, you've talked about it a little bit. We've got a bit of an idea, but just a more in-depth idea of like what goes into throwing an event of like the scale of something like Freestyle Session, like... It's one of the big event, the main events, like internationally for breaking, right? So, yeah, just getting a better idea of like what actually goes into creating an event like that. As, well, you're trying to get, you're trying to get my secret. You're trying yeah, to without secret. giving out all all the details, but yeah, <laughs> just to give people an I mean, idea there, of there's, like there's a lot know. of moving parts, but yeah. you know, on the grand scheme of things. The way I view freestyle session is there's a lot of events within the event, you know, mm -hmm. With, you know, as far as like the, you know, the open styles or the, the funk styles portion of the event, mm -hmm. um, I kind of divvy it out to, to our partners, great one eighters, uh, give them a budget and they kind of just run their section. Mm -hmm. Um, the kids portion, I, I create a budget with little rock and, you know, he puts together the kids portion, you know, mm -hmm. um, as far as that, for me, I'm, I'm putting together the three on three or the, or the crew battle this year. And, uh, well, this year it's a crew battle, so it's 10 versus 10. Oh, wow. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty much taking care of that part. Like as far as, you know, curation is concerned, you know, as far as picking the judges, uh, DJs, all that bit, you know? Um, and then also on the flip, I'm also doing the 40 and up category. So I'm kind of curating that as well. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and then, I'll also put together like, you know, the, the extracurricular stuff, whether it be the, the MC showcase or the DJ exhibition, I'm doing all that too. Um, I have somebody do the hip hop swap me portion mm -hmm. of what kid Riz always handles that. He, he has a, a store up in Oceanside. Um, so he kind of digs doing that part. Um, so, you know, it's a lot of moving parts, different, different things on that week. And um, leading up though, um, you know, I'm, I'm working with different promoters all around the world. Like we just came back from Colombia, mm -hmm. did an event out there. Um, wasn't able to go to Japan, but you know, we work with I work with my partner Toshio and and Katsu out there, and you know, they got to do a successful Japan event, freestyle session Japan event. So the winners are going to come out here, um, and that's kind of how we 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 fund, you know, guests like. If I don't have sponsors, then how do we get people over here? We just throw events in these other countries, and those events fund the winners to come to the U.S. for the finals. You know, so right. like I said, there's a lot of moving parts. It's year round. It's not just like you know, one day <laughs> event. Yeah, like a two day event. Um, right. You know, months and months of planning, and damn near from. From the end of last year to the beginning of, you know, to the, the first day of this year's event is we, we pretty much did something to chip into it every day of the year, you know? Hmm. Yeah. Sounds like a big, 
big important part is having a solid team that you can work with and people that you can trust to throw to deal with yeah, that it, part. You know, if, if we if we have um, if if we're working with partners overseas, yeah, they definitely have a team. Um, mm-hmm. You know, as far as for here on the ground when we do the events here, we have a team. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not really like a day to day team. Right. Like my team for freestyle session here in Southern California is kind of you know we kind of get together a couple weeks before and plan everything. Um, I mean, we're planning things year round, but like you know, as far as getting everybody organized for that weekend, like you know, we yeah. kind of form like Voltron a couple weeks before and, and get it together, you know, because <laughs> everybody's got their own hustles and they ha- they have their own events or they have their own you know jobs to do. So right, right, you know, but but every year, same weekend, you know, we're around the same time, mm-hmm. we get together to do freestyle session and it comes out great, you know. Right, right, yeah, super interesting just to hear like the. The, that side of things uh, it's fun it's funny because i don't i don't like view it as like this big production like, <laughs> like i just do it you know right. like and i and i i mean it it's called freestyle session so a lot of things i do freestyle <laughs> like yeah, like yeah. i'm not as organized as you would think like because i've been doing it for so long like right kind of got it down pretty pretty well for how we do things, right. um, I'm sure it probably drives some people up the wall that <laughs> work with us. But uh, you know, like um, you know, we have to coordinate with, with uh, now. Nowadays, we coordinate with like Red Bull to bring in the live stream and stuff like that. And that right. that's probably the hardest part because everything has to be so organized and has to be on time. And right, everything has has to work like clockwork, or else you know mm-hmm. we're burning money trying to put it on online. You know. Right, right. So, yeah. and does does Red Bull handle like all of that streaming thing, that streaming aspect of it? Yeah, it's 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 usually like Red Bull and Stance working together to, to right. do the stream. So, um, you know, we try to use uh, Stance videographers, and they wind up working with Red Bull to do the production. So, right, um, right. we get the right angles because you know, in the past, we <laughs> there's been people from outside the scene that just kind of mess it up <laughs> yeah they don't know like what to shoot when to cut or whatever yeah yeah, yeah you have like a really dope move going on and they'll zoom in on the person behind them or something you know, like <laughs> yeah, some yeah. <laughs> yeah, i remember seeing the, some of those early videos early yeah, it's, it's funny too because like almost every like gripe somebody has we have the same gripe you yeah. know so yeah. it's kind of like it's like an echo chamber sometimes it's like yo what the hell and then we, like all these people are complaining to us that something happened yeah, yeah. and we're already saying something about it you know? right Right. Yeah. But you're already, you know, you've taken measures to try and deal with these things as they come up. Yeah. I mean, it, at this point, it's like if something happens like a couple of years ago in San Diego, the, the floor was kind of like bubbling up and it was, it was kind of crazy. And yeah. well, I mean, I just couldn't do anything about it. And that is like the first time I ever actually laid, you know, tile or carpet. Uh, and it was like so packed that it created like condensation underneath the floor that made it like bubble up. Like really? it was crazy. It was just, it was just like some random stuff that usually wouldn't happen in a yeah. normal event. <laughs> but like some, some of those issues that happen, like uh, they, they lead to these sort of, I don't know, memorable moments. Like um, I think it was freestyle session eight. Mm. You had something happen with the venue and you had to move it onto like a cruise ship or something. Yeah, of. yeah, that was that was uh yeah, that was in Long Beach at the Spruce Goose Dome, and the, um, we were supposed to do the event at the Spruce Goose Dome, which is located at Queen Mary Park, and uh, you know, right across the way is the Queen Mary, which is like the biggest, like as big as the Titanic, mm. and uh, I didn't even know they had a ballroom because I would have just did it in there if I didn't know. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, like we we lost the Queen Mary or the the Spruce Goose Dome because the city didn't want us in there like last minute and uh you know the guy that booked the place also books the queen mary and the city doesn't have any taps into the into the queen mary so last minute he showed it to me and i was just like dude we got our spot like let's do it you know so we had to move the whole production in there while everybody just kind of like laying in limbo like right you know at the hip-hop spot we just like looking at gear like not knowing if the jam is going to happen and yeah like you said a memorable moment came out of it you know yeah yeah, and that yeah. was a that was a great event too. Yeah. Um, yeah, luckily. <laughs> <laughs> luckily, yeah, yeah. But I mean, yeah, you roll with the punches, right? And I think that's yeah. a that's a benefit of 
having your kind of freestyle attitude. <laughs> well, that's that's hip hop too. You know, you gotta you gotta roll with the punches. You know. Yeah. Exactly. Um, mm. Yeah. Can you? I know, like, you're you have some connection, or you're involved with like armory and and tribal in the past. Is tribal still going these days? I, I don't actually know. Uh, tribal still going? Yeah, right. they they just kind of like veered away from breaking like, right. a long time ago. Right. Um, I think a lot of people thought that I own tribal, but I don't. They were just one of my sponsors, right. so I, I went on tour with them a couple times, and right. they sponsored a freestyle session a couple times. Mm -hmm. um, Armory is actually a store I used to own. Um, I'm not the original founder of it, but I got involved like maybe three months after it started, like mm -hmm. in 2003. Mm -hmm. Um, and quickly, you know, gained some traction and kind of made it one of the main sponsors mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, kind of built it, built a brand out of it. Um, you know, a couple of years ago, we, we, not even a couple of years ago, almost 10 years ago, we closed the shop down. Um, I moved everything to like freestylesession.com. Mm -hmm. So we still do the brand. I just haven't really went too hard. Um, on the back burner, I have a bunch of new designs that I, I do have ready to go but just kind of waiting for an opportune time to like just kind of like start that wave again you know because right, right. i feel like you know with the with the olympics coming in and all these different things i, I don't want to like shoot it too early but i don't want to shoot it too late either. so i, right. I, I kind of have it you know like as far as anything freestyle session related as far as clothing it is an armory brand product mm -hmm. you know but besides being a freestyle session product but mm -hmm. um just kind of put the branding out there like that you know clothing wise it's armory event wise it's freestyle session so um you know like i said i have plans for it it's just it's kind of on the back burner just because you know for the longest time armory was going to be like my exit strategy out of out of breaking events mm -hmm. but then um you know because i was under the impression that breaking was going to like kind of die out again mm -hmm. i did in the 80s but you know after like I went through the 90s, went into the 2000s, so early 2000s, I got got to Armory, and I'm just thinking by maybe like late 2000s, maybe, that it, it would kind of die out a little bit, but it just got bigger and bigger and bigger yeah. until like, yeah, like I ended up closing this, the store down and it just kind of went full-fledged with, with breaking events, you know, so mm. it's pretty wild, the journey that's happened out of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, maybe can you... Can you talk a little about that or your, just your, your perspective on things of like the scene is growing and what are some, way, some ways like that you see or some of the maybe issues that, that are sorry, some of the issues that are there with <laughs> like how, how to grow the scene, how to get it to a bigger audience or how to make these things bigger or should it even grow? That kind of thing. Um, you know, like when a scene gets bigger and grows, there's always going to be growing pains, you know, yeah. the, the, you know, the people that have always been involved, they kind of feel like it's turning into something that it's not. Mm -hmm. And then you got people that have never been that, you know, are looking at it like it's a sport, you know, especially with the Olympics coming in, like they view it as a sport. So it's kind of a sporty aspect. They want to, they want to watch the, the battles in a seated environment. They want to get popcorn and shit. Like, you know what I mean? Like, Mm -hmm. it, it becomes more of a spectator sport than, a, than, than more of a, a active participant type deal, you know? Right. So like, I mean, the beauty of breaking that it could be whatever you want, you know, if you get, if you get normal folks into a building and have them seated nice and neat and then also have a place where people could bust and, and get their cipher on and compete and do whatever they need to do then more power to you. You know what I mean? Like I, I, I think, I think the negative part for me is when people like think that it has to be one way or another mm -hmm. when it could just be everything, you know, mm -hmm. if you don't like sporting events, then don't go to the sporting event type events. You know, if you right. want to go to a culture, more cultural event, go to the cultural event. If you want to go to a club type atmosphere, go to a club. Like there's different avenues and you know, they're all relevant. You know what I mean? There's something for everybody these days. Like, and then now you got more kids involved. So it's a little bit more kid friendly which, you know, if it's more kid-friendly, then you might drive away the adults. Like, there's all these things, you know, that you have right. to balance out, you know. Right. So, um, 
and you know we'll fit we'll figure it out as it goes you know if, if you love this thing then you're gonna you're gonna like soak it all in and figure it out for yourself what you want and what you don't want you know yeah, exactly. so you know i i don't i don't i'm not really a firm believer in like forcing people to do one way or the other like you know everybody's like oh it's not a sport it's an art blah 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 mm-hmm. well all right well then go watch go watch the theater show or go watch people yeah. break on the corner like you don't have to go to the the, the break for gold event <laughs> you know what i mean like <laughs> yeah like, exactly like me I, I like it however it comes you know what i mean like i probably won't won't go to an event that that i have to sit down and watch for like 12 hours like unless there's something for me to do yeah but you know that's not to say some people may not may want that you know, yeah, so yeah. there's something, like I said, there's something for everybody, you know? Yeah. Variety is yeah. important, right? Yeah. Especially with something like breaking. Yeah. And that's, and that's why for me with, at least for my event, I try to try to put out the variety, you know, mm. the, the more different aspects of dance that could, that could go into it, the more aspects of culture, mm-hmm. um, creating a melting pot of different styles and, and things that you get into. And, you know, who knows, you might, you might like, the other stuff that that's thrown in their mix you know yeah so, yeah for sure yeah. yeah i guess for the you know i guess part of the key here is like more people trying to do more events and throw the kind of event that you want right if you see that that seems and, and, it, and everything doesn't have to be an event either you know yeah, that's true yeah like i know people that used to just throw practices like really yeah. dope practices you know or yeah. really dope clubs where breakers can go to and also party, you know, there's, there's different aspects, you know, like I know uh, a few years back when Jay skills used to do her, her cypher addicts event, that was like for the cypher cats, like yeah. there was no, there was no like battle, like pre-programmed battle that you win some cash prize or anything. It's just kind of like you just cypher and, you know, yeah. she, she might have a headline headline battle for the, the evening, but you know, it just wasn't, it, that, it, all it was was a, a cypher event, you know? Mm-hmm. And people loved it, you know. Yeah. So it was clearly like said, a need, right? Yeah, I mean, and if it has to be before a major event, then that's just what it is, you know. So I, th- I think people just need to figure out different ways to do things, you know. Mm-hmm. Like think outside of the box, because I, I feel like a lot of people try to reinvent the wheel as mm-hmm. far as like big events go. And mm-hmm. It's like you know every event should have its own like soul you know like freestyle session is different from ibe right. ibe is different from uk championships uk championships a little different than battle of the year you know like all the big events have their own you know what i mean mm-hmm. so it's kind of what you want yeah yeah and like people just kind of have to start doing it i guess right yeah i mean i think people have been doing it forever you know it's just yeah. tapping in and, and and figuring out a way to be able to do it like, yeah, you know, yeah. like, I, I don't even know how I've been doing my, my event for 25 years. I, I probably borderline went, almost went broke a couple of times, you know, like, but, uh, you know, we figure it out, you know, there's, yeah. where there's a will, there's a way. Right. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like translating that passion into whatever you, you decide to do. Right. Yeah. Um, so maybe, yeah, for, for people who are listening and want to get into this kind of thing of like putting on some kind of event for their community mm-hmm. or whatever um do you have any like words of advice or or things you know mistakes that you made in the past that they can avoid uh i mean you definitely want to like oversee everything and make sure everything's in place you know like i mean as much as i've done things you know there's there's still times where we overlook certain things so you just want to list everything down that you need and, and make sure that you you meet those needs or have somebody that can fulfill those needs. Mm-hmm. Um, I would start small and just let it grow on its own. You know, you're not going to start off and do a, one event and be, be a freestyle session. You know what I mean? Unless you have a gang of money like Silverback, then you could be the, another Silverback. But <laughs> even that, like, he he had our help and a bunch of major players helping him out. You know, so mm-hmm. um, and location. You know, if you, if you're if you're in a place where there's only like five b boys you're going to have to figure something else out because if there's only five B-boys and five B-girls, that's like, you know, that's all you're going to have competition wise, unless you like go outside of your city or outside of your area. Um, and like I said, you have to figure something out for everybody. Like if, if there's a big art 
there's a big art uh, population, then bring artists to do artwork and, and have a general population there. Have some MCs, have some DJs. Like the more different things you add to your event, the more uh, the possibility of having more people at the event become available to you. You know, if it's just a breaking event or just a dance event, then you're only going to kind of hit that population. You know, mm -hmm. I guess. Yeah, you, you mentioned it a little bit too about uh, yeah, just your graffiti, your time with graffiti and DJing and stuff. Um, yeah, I'm just wondering if you can talk a little bit more about that. And and uh, I'm kind of curious too, just about the graffiti. Like, was it you? Was it you who was making the designs for like the freestyle session like posters or or? No, no, that was a friend of mine that actually was. Graffiti artist as well. Press one. Oh. Actually, the first one was probably uh, the first uh, freestyle session one. I had this guy Saki do it. Mm -hmm. He's actually a breakbeat DJ as well. Mm -hmm. But he's like one of the kings in San Diego. He's like one of the first graffiti writers out here and one of the best, you know. So I had him do one. And then freestyle session two, I was kind of in a hurry to do one. So. I just had a graphic designer just kind of slap something together with one with the logo and a couple uh, pictures of different different elements. Mm -hmm. And then three, I had Press do because Press had actually did some of the B Boy Summit flyers before, and he also did this event uh, called Ultimate um, B Boy Session in in Germany. I think it was Germany, um, and he had he just had one of the better styles for for these kind of events, you know. So. I felt like if I had him do my flyer, that it would, the vibe would be set. Mm -hmm. And it was already like, like since, you know, freestyle session was like a first time event or, or, you know, it wasn't that experienced of an event. But when I had a, a press design, it just made it like, boom, it was kind of like a B-Way Summit level already. You right, know? right. Because I felt like uh, visually, you kind of have to set the tone with the flyer, you know? Mm. So... Because, you know, when you look at the flyer, you, you get the vibe of the event. So mm -hmm. you look at the, the cover of the flyer. Oh, it's dope. Let me see the back. The back should have, like, you know, the DJs, the judges. And then when you started looking, going down the line, like, you know, freestyle session three, the, the flyer was super sick. And then the back was like, oh, storm is coming. Mm -hmm. Oh, shit. Like, you know, like, that was a big deal. You know, that was the first time storm had ever been on the West Coast. Right. And it was a big deal, you know. So, like. You you went to the event knowing that it was gonna be some shit, you know. Mm -hmm. So like, so yeah. I, I mean, I, I wouldn't say I, I never did the uh, flyers, but I would kind of like lean into the concept, you know, like, hey, do this, do that, right, right. Because I wanted a certain vibe, you know. Mm -hmm. And I just knew a bunch of homies that were like kings and really good artists that knew how to bring that vibe out, you know. Right. So. Yes. And then as far as DJing is concerned, like when I, when I, I used to have roommates that DJed, so that they would teach me how to DJ. Mm -hmm. And then I was a vinyl collector. So the longest time I had a dope collection of records. Um, and then I actually brought a bunch of records to Alpha Fame 2000. And none of my DJs showed up like in the beginning of the event. So I just kind of spun for a little while, you know, <laughs> until one of the DJs came. But, um, you know. Then I started DJing at clubs in like 2002, 2003, just opening up first. And then I was like, really like, I was a promoter of a club, but then I was always, always one of those guys behind the DJ, like, don't play this, play that. You know? <laughs> just got to the point where I was like, ah, fuck it, I'm going to just try to DJ myself, you know? So, yeah, and it just kind of grew from there. Like, and then eventually um, kind of took a break from uh, breaking events for a second and uh, 2010 went on tour with the Black Eyed Peas, mm -hmm. and I did like a, a VIP room. Like my partner put me on tour with them, and they needed an extra DJ in the VIP room, so I just kind of like DJed there. And mm -hmm. That kind of gave me got me more commercial ready as far as uh, you know music was concerned because before that I was just more about like funk, soul, you know, R&B and reggae, and then that just got me more like oh, okay, these people want to hear that like. I'm not going to tell them no, so I just right. got more of it and just started playing more of it, you know, so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
Yes. Yeah, the last thing, I think it's like a really important question, but it's kind of a joke, but the breaking Illuminati. Yeah. Does it exist? <laughs> i just leave it at that. i just leave it at that. <laughs> nah, I'm <just> kidding. <laughs> Does it exist? Nah. I mean, you know, there's like, I guess if you say like top tier events, like as far as like when we started the Undisputed series, you know, it was like some of the bigger events. So, you know, we'd always see each other all around, all around the world at events. So, you know, we already had something in common where we're all through big events. So we're all just become friends and we eventually worked together. And yeah, people started seeing these, these meetings with all the best promoters <laughs> or the bigger promoters that everybody hates. They hate, but they love to go to the events. Um, <laughs> and yeah, like, yeah, it was kind of a joke. People were just like, oh, breaking the Illuminati. So we just kind of egged it on with a little sign and whatever, you know, just fucking with people. But yeah. nah, there's no fucking breaking the Illuminati. Yeah, like, you know. <laughs> yeah I, I figured that's kind of like how things naturally go in like any any industry or whatever you want to call it. Like the people that are doing things that are really trying to do bigger things like they'll mm. they'll meet each other or they'll come across each other people network and stuff like that it's just natural yeah i um, mean it's wild that you know when i first do an event was in 97 you know battle of the year was already a worldwide thing you know mm -hmm. and uh everybody's trying to emulate battle of the year back then you know mm -hmm. i would have never known that you know 25 years later i'd be one of like three or four events in the world that's still around since back then, you know? Right. So like, yeah, like Thomas is like my comrade. He's, he's, you know, he's like the OG. He's like the top of the chain, but like, you know, I feel like I could, I could look him in the eye and just be like, yo man, we've done some shit, you know? So like, you know, it's, it's, it's cool. Like, because like I said, I, I was a kid that was, that was, uh, I was very inspired by the early bat battle of years and you know the european movement kind of kept the scene alive in the 90s into the 2000s you know and then for for me i think uh freestyle session came at a time when breaking was starting to change as far as like moves and movement you know like southern california was like a melting pot for like power moves and you know the new air flare and air tracks and all these different combos and soul control and you know, all these different crews that were coming out and, and it was an exciting time because there was breakthroughs every every event, you know, so like, and it all got documented through like Freestyle Session and B-Boy Summits and Alpha Fames and, you know, different various events and, you know, that's how that's how we got kind of out there into the world, you know, is we just came out at the right time, right place and, and we remain relevant through the years, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um... I guess one last thing that I'm kind of curious about is, is there, are there any people that you've kind of like taken under your wing and started to show the ropes and like pass on some of this like knowledge of how to put on <laughs> premier events and stuff? Yet? I mean, is there anyone yet? I, I help a lot of different events out. So I wouldn't say that I like, I don't have like, you know, disciples or anything, but <laughs> I do have a lot of, I have a lot of the young homies that I help out yeah. and, you know, there's a lot of the events that are, say, like under UDEF and Pro Breaking Tour that we help out a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, and if people ask me, I'm always an open book. So I, it's not like I keep this information to myself or anything. Right. But, you know, what what may work for me may not work for other people, you know. So, That's a good point. Um, I, I, I do give people ideas and, you know, let them run with it. You know, I'm not one to, like, be like, oh, that event, this event, this person, like, because I don't want to take their shine away from them. You know what I mean? Like, but they're, you know, I've help people since there's been defunct events there's been events from way back that i helped out but you know it's really not that important because for me it's just like we're all here for the scene so you know everybody should be helping each other out anyway so mm -hmm. you know this is what it is but yeah i i uh i mean i'll hopefully one day i'll be able to just you know put together a little team and, and they could just run with the event you know Mm -hmm. that's that's probably what one of my dreams would be to be able to do that and kind of step back a little bit Right. But uh, I'm like uh, I'm like one of those dudes that I always want to do it myself. <laughs> so, so it's hard to it's hard to relinquish authority for certain parts of the event, you know. Right, right. 
but there there has been you know in the last couple of years I have you know just given the mic away to somebody else and just like dude I'm gonna go for a walk you know <laughs> I want to go enjoy my event you know yeah yeah and, true. and I've actually and it actually still went down so I was cool with it so mm-hmm. you know hopefully we'll do more of that soon <laughs> yeah yeah well that's yeah. awesome um, yeah that's uh, I think that's pretty much it for now uh, yeah. cool to in the future maybe have have you on again and talk about some other stuff but really yeah. appreciate you coming on and just sharing your your thoughts and insight and yeah just like experience and stuff it's really cool hearing about it yeah no problem yeah yeah i could, um, I could talk all, all day <laughs> <laughs> yeah well we'll have to do it again sometime um is there any like last words or any shout outs that you want to give before we finish uh just shout out to all the b-boys and b-girls uh, that are still rocking you know all the ones that stop rocking but still you know appreciate the dance and um, yeah, thanks for having me. Um, and big ups to everybody that's rocking with me for you know UDF Pro Breaking Tour Freestyle Session. Um, big ups to my partner Polo Molina, um, Joe Rock and Sweet Lou at UDF, um, Silverback Steve Graham for you know sponsoring our tour and our nonprofit and starting all this with the, with, with me you know a couple of years back. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's not too active in it right now, but, you know, hopefully one day he'll get back into it and we can see Silver back open and pop up again, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, thank you so much for doing this. Yeah. And uh, thank you, everybody. And then, and, then, oh. and then my sponsors. Oh. Uh, Red Bull, Jack in the Box. Here goes John Jay. He's out in Red Bull now um, doing his thing. And, uh, yeah, looking forward to... Uh, a crazy November with the Pro Breaking Tour Open, uh, Rebel BC One World Finals in New York, and then Freestyle Session the week after, like back to back to back. So, oh man, that's awesome! It's gonna be a wild, wild month. <laughs> yeah. Well, hopefully, yeah. a bunch of people can make it out to that. And yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Thanks again for doing this. Thank you to yeah, everyone you. Uh, watching and listening. Really appreciate it, and we'll see you all in the next one. Peace. Peace. Yeah.